So I warned you, we start with our dice tower. Okay. I got three rolls, but I have eight questions listed here. So whatever we roll, those are the questions we're starting with. Two is called Never Again. What is something that you did for a role that makes you say, I'm glad I did that, but never ever again? I don't love the uh, horror genre. I know it's huge. I know that people like love those kind of movies and they make a lot of money, but like I don't watch them because they scare me and I don't want to make them. For what it's worth, I think you shine big time in Fantasy Island. Oh, that's so kind of you. Thank I mean you it. so much. <laughs> All right, next one. Four is binge watch. What is the last TV show that you binge watched? Oh, wow. I think it was a murder mystery. I think it was like Son of Sam or something. Really lighthearted like that, you know, right before bed. I mean, you don't like horror movies, but you like watching that? <laughs> no, so I, cool, I, I like real life mysteries and I like unfolding of like, like, I love that kind of stuff. Anything that's like kind of gratuitous and scary, like that's made up is not my thing. I don't know why. I feel like in that case, just to follow up here, what is the scariest movie that you've ever seen? A movie that you saw once, but say, you know, if I ever walked into a room and it was on, I'm walking out. When I was young, it was The Exorcist. I got it, I saw it, it was really scary, I'm done. <laughs> All right, I got one more for you. Okay. This is a weird one, but I'm calling it boring equals good. We watch you kick ass on screen time and time again. I want you to tell me the most boring, dullest hobby that you have off screen that you love. Maybe hiking? I mean, I'm a big hiker, but it's not like an exciting thing. I mean, it's just sort of, you know. <laughs> I guess it depends how steep the trail is. It's always steep, but I find it very meditative and very just sort of like, you know, one foot in front of the other kind of thing. And I think I do it for that reason. I do it because it's like, it's not overstimulating, it's grounding, and it's just like sort of like something I do on my own. Hello everyone, welcome back for our brand new episode of Collider Ladies Night. I have a bucket list guest on the show today. It's Maggie Q, who has an excellent new movie out. It is The Protégé. Hello and huge congratulations. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. Do you remember the first time you were performing in something mm. and something kind of clicked where mm. the art of acting felt, you know, so fulfilling and exciting to you that you walked away saying like, I need more of this feeling? That was late. I, it was later, definitely later, because there was a lot of like terror that happened in the beginning because I didn't know what I was doing, and I'm, I'm not a trained actor, and I'm not somebody who was you know fortunate enough to study and do all those things and go to, you know, even now you know these these sort of kids that like they're all in acting school and doing all and how wonderful like I I love that stuff and I I would have done it you know had I you know had access to it and I didn't so. So really for me, it was jumping in, um, getting my feet wet and um, learning along the way. And along the way, there was a lot of criticism and there was a lot of, I remember once this producer on set yelled at me and he said, "You, we hired a talent and they sent you. And he said, um, you call yourself a talent? And I was like, I, I really don't. I, I don't think I'm talented. Like I'm just trying to work and make a paycheck and, and all of that. So it was really funny, you know? I mean, I had to go through that for years until I was able to, you know, have enough that I learned that was, you know, I had skills with where I had even a, a modicum of, of confidence on a set where I felt like I was actually contributing in a valuable way. Oh my, it hurts my heart that anyone ever said that to you. Yeah, it's not a nice thing to say, but I, it was no. probably very true at the time. It's, oh, please. It's, all, it's so like wildly inappropriate. I don't totally, like it. Totally. Having gone through that, though, yeah. what did you do at the time to keep, you know, your sights looking forward and mm. not necessarily say, well, this one person who's speaking to me sure. like this is right and I should give up? Yeah, interesting that you say that because I think, I, I don't know what it, was from a really young age or when I was 18, I moved overseas. You know, there's a lot of rejection involved, obviously, in this business and, and everything I was doing at the time. And somehow, for whatever reason, I don't know if I came into the world this way, but I was able to handle rejection quite well. I sort of always had a bigger picture in my head of, of where I was going or what I, what I had to offer. And I think that in those smaller moments where people were really insulting, I sort of felt like, well, it could be true, it could not be true, but whatever it is, I need to continue to work and I need to keep going and I need to make sure that at the end of the day, it's not personal. Because I think that if you think about it, if we don't take things personally, you can rarely get hurt. And so I don't care about those people, they don't care about me, and so I kept that into perspective kind of from a very young age. 
you also mentioned before when we were talking about finding that feeling where the itch to act was so overwhelming that you had to keep having that. What yeah. was that project that you were referring to before? It was this movie I did so many years ago. I think it was like 1999 or something. And um, I was in New York City and um, I was working with this director who was like a Asian American director, but he was based in Hong Kong. And we were filming this uh, movie in Manhattan. And I remember that on that film, the challenge for me, it was such a difficult film for me and probably was thrown into something where I had to perform on a level that I was, was certainly not at yet. And so I, I, I hit this challenge head on. And I remember thinking, what the hell am I doing? It's kind of the opposite of what you said. I was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? This is, I'm not even good at this. Like, what is it that I thought that I could do in this? And I remember I was like, I was very upset. And the director, the director came to me and he said, how can I help you? And I said, I, I, I don't have what it takes to do this. I, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know. And he said to me, um, do you trust me? And I said, yeah, yes, I do. I, I really like you. And he goes, you know, the script and everything and our meetings and everything that we you know, decided to do together, if you trust me, I believe that you're supposed to be here. And I know you have what it takes. And if I know that and you don't know that, then you're not trusting me. And so he's like, I can see something you don't see. So I really, really need you to dig deep and see what I see just for a moment, because if you do, you're gonna get to the place that you need to get to. And at that time, I remember thinking that the challenge of this business was, was so extreme that it was something that I wanted to continue to grow into because I couldn't best it and I wasn't good at it and I knew that. And so I was sort of like, I wanted to build. So it was the opposite of going, oh, I feel so good. It was almost like I feel really crappy about what it is that I, I don't have a hold of, but I know that I love it. So I've got a lot of room to, to build on. That's the kind of stuff I, that's like the kind of stuff I want to hear from a leader. Outside. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're so discouraged that you're like, no, 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 this is not who I am. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fail. So at what point did you find that confidence in your ability in acting? Because <laughs> I've been seeing it for a long time. <laughs> really? I'm still waiting for it. <laughs> um, I think that every project, funnily enough, like presents a, a new-ish challenge. This project was so fulfilling for me because it really felt like I was, I was part of a team of people that I, number one, respected, who inspired me, who were people that, whose work I admired. And then I was able to kind of work among them and with them. Um, I'm gonna say as equals, cause we were on the same set in the same movie. I, I, you know, I use that term very loosely, but what I mean is that, you know, the collaboration factor meant that I was able to truly grow in a skill around people that I admired. And that to me, um, does, does grow you in a very specific way. And outside of ego, you are really just a sponge and you're absorbing and learning from, from sources that you, know, you, you maybe never expected. And, and that really is where it all comes together with what you're talking about. One more title I have to hit is obviously Nikita. That was one of the first shows that I covered heavily week to week when I first oh, started cool. in this industry. Oh, so, awesome. so it's got a big place in my heart. Oh, thank you. From a story and character building perspective. Mm -hmm. So that is the first time you ever got to have a long run with a character on sure. a TV show. Is there anything yeah you learn building that character that now you can apply to your film characters, even though you have a much shorter period of time with them? I went into television as a film person and I didn't really understand it. And the producer at the time, he had produced Buffy. So he was on that for like seven years and he came on to Nikita and he sat me down for lunch and he's like, I have something very serious to talk to you about. And I was like, sure. And he's like, Maggie, um, you've never done television and you're number one. And what that means is you are going to kill yourself to make this show. And I was like, well, I kill myself when I make anything. And he's like, no, 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 you've never killed yourself for 10 months. And I'm telling you, it's the hardest job in the business and it's, it's going to be devastatingly difficult for you. And I was like, okay, went into with movie mentality. And then, you know, in the first year, I mean, when I wrapped the show after the first year, I mean, I was like on an IV for like a week, you know? I shot my adrenals, my endocrine system, everything shut down because I went into it with movie enthusiasm and movie um, level standards. So I wasn't willing to make what, what I'll call TV sort of quality action, all that sort of stuff. I was like, no, 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 I'm gonna go into this like the way I go into my big movies, right? 
And that was a huge mistake because I had no idea what it meant to pace yourself and what that longevity looked like. And so, well, I learned a huge lesson. And so pace was what I took from Nikita, not just from you know being on television, but even going into films because sometimes you, you know, on the protege, it was months and months and months. And I, because of the way I broke down on that show, I really now look at things very thoughtfully in terms of where my energy goes and where it doesn't because self-preservation is truly, I mean, it's everything. Otherwise, you, you know, you've got nothing to give. You get to work closely with your stunt coordinators. And the answer to this question might just be a no and me not fully understanding how the industry works. But yeah. you know, I'm busy watching The Protégé and I can tell you are super talented. You've got great choreography to work with, but then all of that footage goes over to an editor. So are yeah. you ever in a situation where you can communicate with an editor and figure out how to you know, have an all boats rise, best support each other's work? Or is that more mm -hmm. like Martin's department on this movie? Well, if you have a good editor, they're already going to be in that mode of like, okay, I, I can see what I can see and I'm gonna make this the best that I'm gonna make it. On the day, what happens is, if there's something that really matters to me, I will make note of it with the script supervisor so that it's in Martin's notes. So that when he is in the editing room, he doesn't forget these sort of points that really matter. He's got so much in his head, there's no way he can remember everything that's going on. So I make it a point to work closely with also with the script supervisor who's making notes for the editor, Martin. And I'll say, hey, listen, take two is the, the one that I like, or uh, we gotta make sure we don't lose this piece of the sequence or blah, 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 or whatever it is. So I am an active part in it initially on the day and then my notes get taken away with the director and the editor and it's all it's fingers crossed but all bets are off after that i want you to be able to answer this next question freely so i'm going to put up a big spoiler warning for our viewers who haven't seen the film yet but there's just so many action set pieces in this that i want to highlight because they are incredible so just so we can at least hit one right now more broadly what was the one that posed the biggest challenge or the one that you are most proudest of in the final film? I'm really excited that Michael and I had a real like intimate fight in this because he's not known for this. And the fact that we were able to train together and learn choreography together and not only that, but also create this dance where we were really truly building a relationship within this fight. You know, we're building chemistry, there are signals to each other about kind of like what lies beneath between the two of them. And that's really tough to do, to find those beats and the tone of a fight and still be able to, to tell that, have a physical story that you're telling. Uh, that was really fun and a huge challenge because obviously I was like scared to death. It's Michael, I'm fighting with him. I don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't want to, you know what I mean? I just, I have to keep him safe funnily enough because that's where my head's at whenever I'm doing stuff like this. And then we had, um, some bigger stunts too. We had some bigger, like, um, we had huge car hits. We had big jumps. I mean, there was a there was stuff that um, that was incredibly scary. And what was cool was that my my crew was so supportive of what I was doing. And because they were really experienced crews, you know, they had told me like, I, I've never seen actors do this. Like, this is this is all new. Like, to be able to witness all of this and the fact that we watch your double, you know, rehearse for an hour and then you walk in. We were like, wait, what? Like, what's happening? Is this really happening? And is Martin really gonna let her, you know, do these things? And by the end of the movie, it was just sort of like, they were like, okay, well, we, we've we now, the bar's been set in a very different way for what we've witnessed in our careers and we wanna thank you for that. And it was really so cool and kind of exciting to, to do. You said uh, some of them were really scary. What was the, the scariest of the bunch that even made you nervous before jumping into it? I mean, literally the jump. I mean, jumping into the jump. Um, be because we, you know, there's a lot of rehearsal time that goes into, you know, finding like my weight and the velocity in which I fall and when the descender has to slow down and where I hit the ground, like all this stuff. It's, it's super dangerous. But these things are designed, they're designed for safety. So, you know, you gotta have to kind of have some trust in the process. But at the same time, you know, on the day when I'm jumping in the movie, I'm jumping backwards off of these four stories. But, but on the day, I had to learn the jump first. And so I had to be looking at where I'm jumping. And, you know, the, the human brain does not compute, does not tell you to jump. Everything in your body tells you not to do that. And so that you're fighting, you're actually fighting with your physicality so I can imagine how stunt people feel all the time. I mean, they, they must be constantly fighting, you know, because their cells are like, no, you know, pulling them back, really. 
If it looks like I just disappeared, you describing that brought me right back to standing on the platform, getting ready to bungee jump where literally everything in your body this says, like don't do this. That's a perfect, yes. If you've ever bungee jumped, you know that you're looking down and instinctually your, your body is telling you not to do it. That's kind of how it works in action movies. All right, I have to let you go. Just as a reminder to everyone out there, I'm sure you could already tell, I love The Protégé. It comes out on August 20th. Do see it, Maggie. Huge congratulations. Thank you and thanks so for hanging much. out with us. This is really night. fun. I really appreciate it. Bye.